Hey everyone and welcome. I'm V Muse, the Crafting Muse, and thank you so much for joining me for the WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Orcs Take and Paint tutorial. I'm going to be walking you through this step by step, so if you are brand new to painting, don't worry, there is going to be explanation as we go along the way. First though, let's take a look at the supplies and the paints and the minis you're going to want for this. For your supplies, you want to have a paintbrush set that contains both round and flat tip brushes in various sizes. Vallejo does have a basic starter set that you can check out if you so choose, but you can use whatever you have available at hand at home. You want a paper plate to act as your paint palette, paper towels, I usually recommend two to three sheets of those, two cups of water, one cup is going to be for rinsing and the other cup is going to be for thinning your paints. Now I'm not talking about units of measurement, I mean two individual cups here. You'll also wanna add in a little drop of dish soap to each of those cups when you add the water because it's going to help with rinsing your brushes. It's also gonna help with thinning out the paints because the dish soap aids in that factor. And finally, you want some newspaper or the like on top of your table surface, unless you're using your own craft table, in that case, carry on. I'll be using paints from Vallejo, but keep in mind, this doesn't mean you have to. Use what you have available at home. I will also be using more generic terms to substitute in the classic names for the Vallejo paints, as well as giving you tips on how to mix a similar color with paints you may have already. Starting up with the paint colors, I have black, which is truly a classic black. Next, we'll move on to dark sea gray, which is a dark gray. Sky gray is a light gray. White gray is a pale gray. Dark sand is actually a nice light honey mustard yellow. Brown sand is a warm tan. Cavalry brown, contrary to name, is a brick red. Saddle brown is a medium brown. Chocolate brown is a dark brown. Olive brown, just like its friend cavalry, is actually a dark olive green, not too much of a brown. Gunmetal gray, which is a dark silver metallic. Classic black wash, as well as an umber wash, which is just a brown wash. So these are the paints you're going to want to have available as we start this project. And of course, you want to have your Orc minis. The great thing about WizKids miniatures is that they come pre-primed. This means this is a step you will not need to worry about in this tutorial. The other thing you may want to check for are if there are any major mold lines you want to remove. If you find something, you can simply buff it down with a nail file if you have one at hand or you might have some specialty tools that specialize in removing those. If you don't have any of the above, that is okay. That's something you just keep in mind for another painting of another mini, but I will have a link in the description below so that you can check out a few options at hand for you. The other thing I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you a technique I call shadow layers. This is something I personally use often when I have multiple miniatures to paint at the same time. It does a really great job keeping the detail helping you create a really effective look to your miniatures, but it's also quick. So by the time you're done with this tutorial, you're actually gonna have both of those orcs painted. It's not gonna be a case of picking one over the other. Let's get started, shall we? I'm using Vallejo's Black from their model line, but really any matte black paint will work for this part of the process. Do not go for a gloss black as that will definitely affect the results for this technique. One thing I'm going to highly recommend to you is that you make sure to thin your black paint. This is going to make it so that you're able to get into those nooks and crannies a lot easier. It'll flow a lot better for you. And it's something where more often than not, less is actually more when it comes to putting paint onto your miniatures. So do be sure to thin those paints and do use the secondary cup of water with just a little bit of dish soap because that actually helps with the flow and use that to mix into your paints. Don't use your rinse paint because that's going to literally muddy your colors, okay? You also want a large round brush to apply the paint and be sure to get the paint into all the nooks and crannies. Sometimes poking your brush into the area you need to get will help just, you know, up and down, poke, poke, poke. That really does help get the paint into those smaller, more narrow areas of the miniature. These guys have a lot of hidden spots that need paint, especially the chainmail orc. You will want to be sure to really get into those crevices of the link work with your black paint. When you are done, your mini should both be covered entirely in black. This includes the base. Just when you think you're done painting everything black, uh, black is notorious for as it dries, it's going to reveal some spots you may have missed. So 
as your miniatures are drawing, do go back and just check and make sure there aren't like little specks that you may have missed. You can just, you know, go back in with that paintbrush, give them a little dabble do ya, and we'll go on from there once everything's dried. All right, now it's time to take a little bit of a break while you let this paint dry. Now, take the time to go and rinse out your brush because that black paint you wanna make sure is no longer in there and get up and move around for a little bit and come back in about five minutes and just test and be sure that your paint is fully dry before moving on. If it is not dry, you will not be able to do the next step. For the shadow layers, I will be using these three colors to progress through the process. If you do not have grays, all you need to do is mix some black into white to create a gray color. Don't go from black to white. It's actually going to take you a lot longer to get to gray that way. You can even add in white as you go along to lighten up your original dark gray for the additional layers. It's actually a pretty handy way to go with this process. To effectively dry brush, be sure to use a flat bristle paint brush. You want to dip the brush into your paint dab off the excess paint onto a paper towel, and then pull the gray across the texture you want to bring out, as you can see here on the texture of my wrist. I wanna take a moment and explain why I always go to recommending testing on the wrist. It's because the nature of your skin and the texture of your skin will respond most like what the paint will do on the miniature because of the plastic and the details in the plastic. So just take a moment, take the brush, just brush it across and it'll really truly help you see if you have the right paint load on your brush. As you get more experience, you'll know as you go along if you have the right amount. You won't always have to go to the wrist, but I do recommend it. Here is what your mini will look like as you finish applying the dark gray. You won't notice a vastly drastic change, but you will see some of these details start to pop out, which is the whole point. For the first two shadow layers, I do very much stress the fact that you try as best you can to draw your brush from the bottom up across the mini. That's gonna start creating the highlighting of the textures. It's going to bring out those edges a lot more, and it also gives it a more consistent look as you go through. So that is something to keep in mind as you're taking that brush, go from the bottom and pull it up. Pause here and give everyone a chance to do the first layer of gray on both of the minis before moving along. Now we move to a mid-tone gray to further enhance the details using sky gray. Same as before, draw the brush from the bottom of the miniature and up to pull out those details. Now, I did make a point to have a comparison of these two minis side by side so you can see the difference between the first layer using the dark sea gray and the second layer with the sky gray. Now we're moving on to the last layer of gray, and that is white gray, which is that very pale gray. Again, here's the side-by-side -side of the two miniatures, the one that has the full run of the layers and the one that isn't quite there yet. Heads up for you in the approach. In this case, we're going to switch it up and we're going to pull the brush from the top of the mini down to the bottom instead of bottom up like we did with the first two layers. Keep the brush strokes very light and build the color to bring the details you really want to pop out that much more. You may even go back and do another second sweep around with this color if you want to. We're going to stop here with the white gray. One thing I will mention is that you could take this an additional round with a pure white and do the same top to bottom pull of the brush. However, you wanna make sure you keep this very light handed. It's a similar technique to Xenophil, except we're doing a lot more of the layering of colors underneath, which is why I call it shadow layers. It's also something where if you want your miniatures to really pop and be vivid, then yes, I would go for the white. However, for our orc boys, we're keeping them in the more muted tones, which is why I'm stopping here with white gray. Here's the other thing I want you to do. Once you're done, get up and move around and give yourself a break, get a drink of water, move your body around, get a little snack, and I'll see you in 10 minutes. To make sure that this technique is successful, you want to be sure that you are thinning your paints. And yes, everyone jokes around about thinning your paints, but in this case, you really do need to, and make sure you are using the special water reserved for this as opposed to the rinse water. What you wanna do is thin your paints down to be the consistency of about skimmed milk. This is gonna make sure the paint flows over the miniature, but that it also acts a little bit more translucent so that the work that you've done with the shadow layers will show up and through and take on the tint of the paint color that we're going to be using in the different sections. 
You can also use washes and inks for this approach as well, very effectively. So if you have those on hand and you want to experiment a little bit, by all means, go for it. So that being said, let's get started with this section. On both of the orcs, use a fine tip brush and apply the olive brown paint onto the pants. If you do not have this exact color, you can simply mix a bit of brown into a green paint to create a nice dark olive green. Now, if you should get some color onto the skin of the orcs throughout this entire process, you can let that paint dry if you wish, or if it has already dried, just go back in with the dark sea gray and touch up over where you may have slipped. If it is still fresh, you can go back in with a damp, clean paintbrush and try and pull the paint off the skin of the miniature. You may have to blot a little bit with a paper towel after you're done. I'm gonna be using the same paint on each orc, but they're gonna be getting the paint in different sections of their bodies. So keep an ear out when I say that leather armor gets this and chainmail gets that. And yes, that's how I'm going to refer to them through the rest of the video to make it easier. So keep in mind, again, this is an assembly line step by step. So you will be working both at the same time. If you have too many holders, great. If not, you can still work through it. I purposely worked with one on a holder and one off a holder so people can see both varieties. Let's keep going. Going in with a thinned out saddle brown, which is a warm medium brown, apply this to the hip armor for the leather armor orc. And again, stick with that fine point round brush for better control. You're gonna wanna get this color onto the sides and the edges of the armor as well. So be careful when you are applying this thin paint. Sometimes it even helps to hold the mini at an angle so the paint is actually tipped away from the edge of the skin and the armor, as opposed to toward the skin and the edge of the armor. When it comes to the belt, just paint the inside of the belt with the saddle brown and leave those two outer strips alone as well as the accent in the buckle. We're going to address that with a different color in the next step. In addition to this zone of the leather armor, you'll also want to hit the boots. When it comes to chainmail, you want to get the helmet, the wrist covers, and the wrap. Another thing people often will notice on my live streams is that I will steeple my pinkies together or against my miniature holders. Uh, again, this is another stability trick. So if you're having problems with trying to keep things steady, you can lock, usually it's your dominant hand, you can lock your dominant hand against a portion of your opposite hand, uh, the miniature holder itself, and that will give you a little bit more control over your work. Still working with thin paints, go into using chocolate brown, which is again a nice dark brown. And you're going to start with that belt area, painting in those two strips that were left alone, as well as that detail on the buckle. Then you're going to move over to the knee pads and finally the shoulders and the elbows for the leather armor orc. As for the chainmail orc, it's the boots. Just the boots, paint the boots. Now we're going to start with getting some color onto chainmail. Using that gunmetal gray, which is basically a dark silver, you're going to apply this to all of the chainmail area. Again, make sure that this is a thinned out paint. If you do not have a dark silver metallic, you can just take a classic silver metallic and add in a little bit of black paint to darken it up. Don't go too ham with that black though, because it will start to mute the metallic. So just a little bit should take you to the level you need. Once you paint all the chainmail, now you wanna be sure to hit the ax. What you're going to do is put all of this on the ax entirely because it's easier to apply over the colors of metallics and do things like a wood handle and such and have cleaner lines by taking this approach. Once you paint the ax with all of the gunmetal, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to hit that strip on the top of the helmet as well on the chainmail orc. Now it's time to move over to the leather armor orc and you're going to get his ax as well with the same metallic gunmetal. This is going to make things much easier, especially with this ax, when it's time to start adding in more of those little details that you can see. At this point, be careful when you are working with a red. Reds are notoriously difficult to cover up. So take that fine tip brush and just slowly and carefully and surely make sure you're painting it and getting it where you want the red to go and keep it away from where you don't want the red to go. 
a little tip is if you want to stabilize it a bit more, it helps to pull the mini in close to yourself, kind of like as if someone was praying, except you're holding the miniature by locking in your arms against your rib cage and keeping your hands close to your sternum. It actually gives your hands more stability and better control of your brush. So I do recommend you do that if you're having difficulty trying to keep everything in the area where you want it to. Just be careful with that red. Using Cavalry Brown, which is really a brick red color, start first with the Leather Armor Orc and get the red onto his cape. If you do not have this exact color, you can opt to mix some brown into red, or really you could use any color you'd want for the cape. Be sure to use a fine tip brush as you carefully paint the cape and the strips around the top of his ax and the handle. Should you get some red on an area you don't wish to have it go, you can remove it again with a fresh, clean, damp brush to wipe it away. Or if it's dried or drying, just go back and touch it up as needed with the dark sea gray again as a reminder. When it comes to the chainmail orc, carefully paint the belt around his waist in the same color. We're hitting a point now where you want the miniatures to dry completely before we move forward. So this means break time. I mean it, get up, move around, get a drink of water. Hydration is very important for your body. Get something to eat if you're getting hungry. Come back in 10 minutes and we'll pick back up with the additional details we still need to cover. We're also not gonna be using the glazing technique as much. So keep in mind, we're not gonna be thinning the paints to the level of a glaze like we have been. In this case, we're just thinning them down a little bit to make them easier to work with when we get back. Now, I'll see you in 10. Got it? Using dark sands, which again is sort of a light honey mustard color, and a fine point brush, you're going to want to start with the chainmail mini and get the skulls as well as the teeth details around his wrists and the horn on the helmet. For this step, you're not really turning the paint so much into a thinned out glaze. You still want to thin it a little bit, but in this case, you are doing a thin layer of this color on the skulls, but keeping that paint floating on top of the skulls so you're not getting into the nooks and crannies of the sockets and the teeth. It's sort of a hybrid of dry brushing and coating with this color. For the other spots, you'll also want to carefully apply the paint and finally, you're going to get the teeth in his mouth. Once you're done with chainmail, switch over to leather armor and this time you just need to tackle the tusks and the teeth in his mouth. Finally, the last thing you're going to do, not thinning out the paint, still sticking with dark sand, you're going to dry brush this onto the base of each of the minis with a flat bristle brush. We are getting very close to finishing up these fellows. There's just a couple more details we need to address and then we're going to take care of the skin. No, I have not forgotten about the skin. There's just a different approach that we're going to do to finish that up. So first, let's make sure we address a couple more details in terms of the fur as well as the hair. Ready? So going in now with brown sand, which is a warm tan color, you're going to start with the chainmail orc and get the fur details on his wrap and the wrist wraps by floating the brush along the top. Should you need a tan like this, you can take a brown and add in a touch of white and just a tiny little bit of orange if you want to warm it up. You don't want this getting into the nooks and crannies, just like before with the skulls and the teeth. Smaller controlled sweeps of the brush will work best and keep an eye out for the details around the wrist wraps. Once you are done with chainmail, then go back to leather armor and get the strap and his hair painted up with the same color. Finally, the last step in painting is the hair. Simple as that. So you're gonna thin out the same black paint we used to paint this mini entirely with first, and you're going to apply it to the hair. It helps if you start at the base of the ponytail and pull the paint down to the tip of the ponytail. The same can be said for the leather armor orc. You're working it from the hairline to the base of the ponytail. Basically work with the flow of the hair as it goes over the head. Here's a look at the orcs at this point. If you notice any spots you want to touch up or fix, now is the time to do it, and you also wanna be sure that you give the paint some time to dry. You'll want to use a black wash on the skin to get the gray flesh color for these minis. 
with a large, round, clean brush. I start first at the top of the body with the face and the neck and then move to the shoulders and the arms and the torso. This wash does not need to be a thick layer. A little is going to go a very long way and the whole point with applying the wash is to make sure you keep the wash moving and not to let it puddle up too much in certain areas, which with these guys will definitely happen because of the amount of detail that is here on their flesh areas, especially in those scar zones. So keep that wash moving around. You can always dip your brush onto a paper towel if you have too much, and then go back to the mini and pull off any excess wash that may be puddling. Using a black wash to tinge the skin gray with the shadow layers is a really effective way of getting that gray flesh look. You can also do this with other colors too. So just keep it in mind, if you wanna have fun and play around with flesh tone colors, use this technique and see what you get result wise. Once you get the black wash on the flesh, you're going to switch to the umber wash and apply it everywhere else on both of the orcs. This means you're going to apply the umber wash both to the chainmail area as well as to the leather armor areas of these orcs. Again, stay away from the skin zone. You don't want these two to mix together. Should you want more of a drastic and darker tone, however, you can opt to skip umber and just do the black wash everywhere. But keep in mind, this is definitely going to deepen and darken those colors that you've just applied to your orcs. So if you want to keep them into a more vivid and brighter look, stick with the umber. If you really want these guys to be dark and menacing, then you can use the black wash and coat the entire mini. Congratulations, you finished your minis, at least to this point, because right now those washes really do need to dry before there's anything else you can do. So before your host or hostess brings this to a close, I do just want to go over a couple things that make it a little bit more effective to complete your miniature, but you can't do right now. First thing are those lovely little round discs that WizKids provides in the packaging. You can place your miniatures onto those discs using super glue. However, if you're using any type of super glue that has the word gel on it, run away. That leaves a very chalky look and texture to your miniatures if it seeps out, if it bleeds out anywhere. So please do not use the gel kind. Use the classic super glue style. Brand wise doesn't really matter but I, I really am finding that gel is not good for miniatures at all. The other thing you may want to explore is sealing your miniature. Now there are various types of ways to seal them up. Different miniature companies do sell specialty sealers for these. Vallejo has a set of their own, which you can go and check out if you'd like. Uh, there are also other methods of doing it in terms of things you can find at the hardware store and craft supplies. So depending on what you have at home, I do recommend that you go back and you seal your miniature. If you wanna make sure your miniature stays matte, make sure that it is a matte finish. If you want it to have a slight sheen to it, then you wanna go for a satin. If you want it to be glossy, then guess what? Pick out the one that says gloss. That being said, thank you so much for joining me for the WizKids D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Orcs Take and Paint tutorial. That's a mouthful. I hope you learned some cool new things for yourself, that you've got some techniques that you feel confident in using. Enjoy the process of painting miniatures. It's something I love getting people into and it's something I highly encourage people to keep doing. So thank you to our host, our hostess, for showing you this tutorial this uh, evening or day, depending. Everyone stay safe and enjoy yourselves. I will see you on the flip side on social media. You can find me as The Crafting Muse pretty much everywhere. And do be sure to use that hashtag and tag WizKids at WizKidsGames. The hashtag is WK, take letter N, paint. Take care for now, everyone, and 